I'm June Gruber, an Associate Professor of Psychology at the University of Colorado Boulder and Director of the Mental Health Expert Series. We're here today with Dr. Dacher Keltner, a Professor of Psychology at the University of California, Berkeley and Faculty Director of the Greater Good Science Center to talk with him about his really groundbreaking work on the science of happiness. So thanks for being with us today, Dacher. It's always good to talk to you again. I was wondering if you could start by telling us a bit about the work you do connecting science with wellness and mental health. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's multifaceted. So within the lab, um, you know, what my um, focus has been with my students is, you know, including you, is um, we have this uh, really remarkable array of positive emotions that I believe that evolution has built into our minds and our social interactions. Emotions like gratitude and awe and compassion and contentment and laughter and love. Um, and those have very direct influences upon patterns of neurophysiology, like immune response, vagal tone and the like, that then influence uh, how our social lives go and how our uh, well-being goes. And so, you know, in the last 20 years, our lab has really focused on how does awe help veterans and people and, you know, at-risk youth? How does the practice of gratitude help the health of relationships? Um, how does... Uh, Getting outdoors, we're about to publish a paper and looking for awe help people who are over the age of 75, who really are vulnerable to anxiety and depression, uh, attenuate those qualities. So our focus is on these amazing positive emotions that bring us delight in relationships and a healthy mind. So how did you get started doing this work on, I mean, just as you said, these amazing positive emotions. I mean, your work is just so exciting, so inspiring and, and really fresh. So how did you start doing it? Thank you for asking that. And it's so good for all researchers out there to be thinking like, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the deep answer is my parents. I was raised by an artist and a literature professor who was my mom, who really both were kind of romantics and loved the passions, joy, ecstasy, mm -hmm. awe, you know, mm -hmm. compassion. Uh, and then it, scientifically, it actually began um, when I was a postdoc with Paul Ekman, and I learned the facial action coding system, and we started to look at the human face, and there was this narrow focus on anger, disgust, fear, surprise, uh, sadness, and then something called happiness, which I don't even think is an emotion. And as I learned this tool and I was l gathering data and looking at it in my social life, I would see people blush and I would see them get embarrassed and I'd see them laugh and I'd see them pucker their lips when they were flirting. These are all facial muscle movements that we've subsequently mapped to distinct positive emotions. Um, and, that, and that really became this portal into the question that Darwin asked of like, why do we have these emotions? You know. And now, you know, they're really robust data showing, you know, reviewed by Lonnie Shiota and, and Alan Cowan, you know, there are probably eight to 10 distinct positive states that really are important to our lives that we need to in include in the conversation about mental health. Yeah, and as you're saying, just part of our lived experience as human beings in this world. Ah. You know, I, I mean, fundamentally, like you know, our lab's been working on awe and it's so interesting, you know, like awe, and I hate how I pronounce it, awe. <laughs> Whenever I talk to British people, they're, and they're like, so you study awe? And I'm like, yeah, I study awe, you know, and they're like, Ugh, you know. <laughs> but, you know, awe is about your lived experience of a human, as a human in the broad context of your lives. And what better thing to study? Yeah, and in the natural world too, you know, as you're yeah. mentioning the work you're doing, getting outside and just yeah. appreciating the planet we're on. So um, I'd love to hear some of the kind of chronicles along the way over your career, both, you know, the frustrations and failures, but the things that you've really savored and held on to that have been special moments in your career. You know, the, you've got to really, it's a funny, you know, for those people who are really, going to dig into the career like you and I are of kind of peer review science, right? It's, it's just a long slog. And, you know, it's funny when outsiders 
um, see the let reviews we get, you know, a dozen single space pages just beating you up with everything that you say and do just to try to publish a paper, you know, it's, it's humbling. And I would say it's been uh, a tough 15 year, I wouldn't call it frustrating, but like opening the field's eyes to all these other emotions, right? Which now there's a lot of interest in mm -hmm. and a lot of, a uh, lot of movement and emerging science. So that's been hard. You know, along the way you have to, um, the field will guide you to give up on ideas, right? Um, you know, so I did early in my career, I did work on personality and emotion and I just, you know, I'm not, it, it isn't my strong suit and I never could publish the findings that were seemed eminently publishable. And that was, you know, I was like, wow, I spent hundreds of hours coding faces and so forth. And, you know, I mean, the, the delights of our career are extraordinary. You know, you, you, you know, for me, it's, um, uh, you know, using the science of emotion to help with criminal justice reform. You know, I was involved in a case against solitary confinement. I'm working with people who've been incarcerated, adapting to their lives. Uh, it was partnering with Sierra Club on awe, you know, and getting veterans and high school students in Richmond and, uh, and Oakland out to enjoy the benefits of nature with being part of Inside Out. You know, so it's, you know, the career gets you to these wonderful conversations. Um, and, you know, that most importantly, you still, you know, I, and I, I think you've had Steve Hinshaw on the shit program, you know, and Steve's mm -hmm. probably about 10 years older than me and he just won this award. And I asked him like, you know, we'll savor it. And he's like, I've just scratched the surface. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I feel. I feel like, you know, yeah, yeah we still, we still got to figure that out. You know, like our lab's working on music and art right now. And, and, and that's such a mystery, right? So, uh, so it's an amazing career. I feel very I love the, the beautiful mysteries that you're saying with Steve's example and, and your own experiences, they don't end, but that's, that's a great thing, you know? Yeah, no, it's, yeah. I mean, I think all of, many of us, including you, you know, will be on our deathbed, like, I still got one more study to do. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's how it is, so. Yeah. So, I mean, thinking about, you know, till the very end, I suppose, um, as you kind of think about the future, I mean, what do you think are the most important next steps in the field? You know, if, uh, you know, one big one is that I've been partially involved with, you know, in working with Pinterest and, Apple is like, you know, can you really deliver well-being technologically? Mm -hmm. And I'm actually skeptical, you know, and I, I suspect you would be too. Like if well-being is really social mm -hmm. and then moving your body out in the world to find delight, can we do it technologically? I don't know, you know. Um, for me, you know, having been located in this, the science of emotion for 25, 30 years, um, I think it's, I think, you know, the um, next waves of universality are going to be really interesting. We just published a paper on how in the ancient Mesoamerican art that predates contact with Westerners, mm -hmm. they're, they're portraying faces in context, just like we would, right? So wow. I think they're going to be new big data, you know, um, computational approaches that will be very exciting for our field. Um, and then, you know, I think the, um, I, you know, for me, one of the big mysteries is our, uh, is, is the aesthetic realm, you know, of music and visual art and, you know, the design of buildings and, you know, how this all makes us feel things. And I think, interestingly, um, I think psychologists have a lot to say in that realm, right? Beyond mm -hmm. philosophy and mm -hmm. specialists in the field. So, you know, I could go on. I mean, it's, we're yeah. still, yeah. there's still a lot of work to do. And I love the point you made at the end about art and wellness, because art yeah. is such a central part of our lives as children. And then yeah. somewhere it disappears along the way, right? For so many people. And music, you know, we're, we're, I mean, you know, yeah, our visual art in particular, you're right? Yeah. Like we draw as kids and you have young kids yeah. and then it just stops, you know? Yeah. Um, 
and uh, and I would add, you know, dance too. We're starting to do a little bit of research on dance. Dance is like, I mean, you ask people, you go to a wedding and you're dancing with eight year olds and two year olds, and you come out of there like, I haven't felt this good in 22 years, you know, and <laughs> and why aren't we studying that? Why aren't we promoting that? Right. So yeah, so art is and music are probably they are well-being interventions. They are deep traditions and they should be a, a bigger part of our, our work. Yeah, we need to understand them better, just as you're saying. So the last question I had for you, which is my favorite, um, because I feel like you're always so good at career and life advice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, um, you know, what advice would you have for other people, maybe people watching this interview today who are interested in the field? Yeah. Well, I, I feel... Um, you know, it's so interesting. I was thinking about this, um, you know, uh, when you're at the, my stage of the career, you're like, what, what am I doing? You know, what happened? And, and, uh, you know, I think that the first thing is I would say, and I, I got really, um, guided into this by Lee Ross, who was my advisor at Stanford in grad school and Phoebe Ellsworth and then Paul Ekman, where, just follow, go after things you don't know, you know, mystery. Um, science is really animated by mystery. You know, when Darwin wrote around the world, he just didn't know what all these observations were amounting to. Uh, when von Humboldt, you know, started drawing ecosystems, he didn't know either. So, you know, I think, you know, there's a tendency to like, I want to go for something that's certain. Uh, and, and I would go after what you don't know. And, and I, you know, I always tell my students, like, go after unexplained variants, you know, like, if you know that social class has influences on things, which it has profound influences on it, try to figure out other influences that you could study. Um, I think uh, the second thing is, um, you know, is this, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, I've been doing some research on tears and goosebumps and and i think what they they're really interesting autonomic physiological responses that are distinct uh that kind of tell you like what you're doing right now really is what you care about most right mm -hmm. if you're tearing up uh, or if you get a little chill and and you got to do that you know you got to if you're lucky enough to like you and i to like i've got a job it pays the bills most of my bills man, then, you know, do something that really moves you, so. Thank you. That's, that's beautiful advice and really good advice, too. So, because what's life for, you know? Yeah, no, yeah. especially now, you know, yeah. right now, Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. climate crisis, fires in California, where I live, it's, it's like, we got to do what matters. Um, so, and we, we have a lot to offer. Well, thanks for speaking today, Dacker. Really oh, it's always good to see you, June. All right. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye.